Hey, did you know that the best growth strategy is not marketing? Yes, that's right. That's coming from a marketing guy saying that marketing is not the best growth strategy for businesses. Do you know what is? Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman and I help dissect the world's most exciting businesses and their strategies so that you and I can grow ours faster. Today I want to talk about the number one growth strategy that most businesses should use in addition to marketing and in some cases uh, replaces marketing, but not always. That is acquiring other businesses. Now hold on, you might be thinking that's only for big businesses, that's only for public companies to really do and that is not true. I wanna give you some examples. Some of them are big companies, but I wanna give you some examples of how you can adopt this strategy for your own business, whether you're a $500,000 annual revenue company or a $10 million uh, annual revenue company, okay? So you take a company like HubSpot, right? HubSpot has a, is a CRM, small business CRM. They uh, manage leads, they help inbound marketing. So do things like uh, email marketing and sales outreach, and they even have their own payments portal integrated into their platform so you can do HubSpot payments. Huge billion dollar company, right? About a year ago, they purchased a daily newsletter. It's called The Hustle. Uh, I talk about The Hustle a lot on my, my show. I love it. It's amazing. The founder, Sam Parr, uh, really genius kind of bootstrapped entrepreneur. And The Hustle talks about cool business ideas. That's essentially their thing, whether it's news that's going on or you know uh, real estate opportunities. They talk about just the cool that I, people like me love consuming. They have 2 million daily subscribers. And about a year ago, they purchased, HubSpot purchased them for $25 million. Now, they purchased a company with almost no assets except for a digital asset, which is their audience, right? And then their ability to kind of communicate to that audience and, and captivate them. So they bought them and they did it smart. They didn't buy them and then basically rename it or absorb it into their own brand and call it like, the HubSpot, you know, or the daily HubSpot or anything like that. They just kept it the same. And all they did, instead of the hustle having sponsored newsletters by other companies, right? Like this newsletter is sponsored by Apple. HubSpot just inserted them in there, all right? So, uh, but they did it in a more organic way. They didn't say like this newsletter is sponsored by HubSpot. They simply added free resources and opportunities to get people to organically engage with HubSpot. So you'd be reading about like, you know, Apple stock is down and you know, Amazon uh, buys this company or whatever the news is. And then you'd have like, hey, do you need help getting thousands of sales leads? Click, click here for these three free resources. You click there and then it leads to a HubSpot blog post or a HubSpot um, guide or something where it asks for your email address, right? So it's inbound marketing, it kind of leads them into the funnel. That is worth it to a company like HubSpot because they could pay 25 million, buy their way into the hearts and minds of 2 million people per day, or they could go spend hundreds of millions of dollars over the next year or two trying to run ads to acquire people or pay influencers to try to engage their audience to sign up for the HubSpot, okay? So they did it another way. They bought what seems like, for a lot of money, 25 million, they bought a company so that they organically can now market to the an already engaged audience. And they did it in a smart way because if they took the brand over, those people would lose respect for the hustle and they would probably leave, right? So HubSpot acquired a company and immediately from day one had access to 2 million engaged people. That's an example. Let me give you another example. Amazon is preparing to buy iRobot for like $1.7 billion. Now iRobot does a, uh, they build these sort of robot machines. One of them is a robot vacuum, right? You just basically put it in your, on your floor and you hit go. You have an app where you can schedule when it goes and it automatically goes around and vacuums your house, right? So why would Amazon do this? Number one is it's a top selling product on Amazon. So if Amazon buys this, they can probably increase their margin on that particular uh, item. Also, iRobot scans the house as it vacuums, right? So that's how it learns if it's on the first floor or in the basement or on the second floor, you like pick it. I know this because I have one. 
you pick on the app, like I want it to vacuum upstairs. You go and put it upstairs and then it knows where the walls are and all the things, you know, so it can vacuum more efficiently. Now think of this from Amazon's perspective. Amazon sells a lot of home items, you know, uh, inter interior design, you know, um, uh, the, the Alexa app, um, or uh, I'm sorry, the Echoes, right? They use the Alexa app. Uh, they sell chairs and they sell tables and they sell curtains and they sell couches. They sell everything, right? Inside the house. So now they have an Echo device, which people use to play music and order things. And so they'll talk to uh, the Echo and they'll say, Alexa, like order me this thing or Alexa, turn on my lights or whatever, right? So they already sort of have this, um, this digital home, you know, ownership on the digital home. Uh, front for, for using the Echo. And now with the iRobot vacuums, now they're scanning the house also so they can help you recommend things based maybe on the size of your home. Uh, you know, if they know you have a small home, they'll recommend things that help you kind of uh, uh, optimize your space. If you have a bigger home, they might suggest bigger items. So they're using this as a data play. It's so smart. If they didn't buy a company like this, they'd have to figure out how do we get into people's homes and figure out the layout and how big it is. You know, how do we get that data? But now by buying this company, they can simply let the company run the same way it is now because it's it's a, a great company. It's, it's uh, very valuable. Uh, it's a great product, right? They just let it go. But they use the data to help their other core business, which is their marketplace, right? Super smart. So let's get into how you can do the same thing. Because most of you are probably have, you know, small to medium sized businesses and acquiring another business maybe is something you thought about, but you haven't really thought was possible. So first of all, to acquire a business, uh, if you have good credit, you can use capital, right? If your business has good credit, good track record, you don't use your own cash. You don't have to. You can use the bank's money. And then uh, it might be hard getting a loan these days right now, depending on who you are. But if you have assets or you have proof of monthly contracts if you're a service business you can use uh, credit you can use a bank loan uh, to be able to you know purchase or finance the purchase of a company but think about the same two strategies that i just used for hubspot and hustle and amazon and irobot the hustle wanted access to an audience so that they reduce their overall marketing costs amazon wanted access to data so that they reduce uh their data cost uh, their data acquisition costs, but also made it much more easy and, and possible, right? They didn't have to figure out a way to get this data. They bought the company. Think of the same thing. So let's say you own a, a pool cleaning company, okay? A pool cleaning company, you know, uh, all, all you do is you maybe have a, a network of people that go around and clean pools in your particular area. Uh, maybe you have multiple areas and multiple like offices in different towns, but you have people that kind of do go, go do that. So you might be interested in reducing the uh, the overhead with scheduling and, um, you know, ser customer service requests uh, or service requests, uh, you might you might want that, right? So what you could look for is to find some real small uh, software company, you know, that hasn't really got off the ground yet. Maybe they're not even in the pool space. They're probably not even in the pool space. They're probably in some, some sort of like, you know, maybe salons, uh, haircutting, um, you know, pet grooming, you know, something like that, right? Maybe they're a small CRM that just started up. So what you could do is you could find, look for one of these companies, maybe on loopnet.com. It's a business sales site. Look for one of these companies and see if there are any available for purchase. A few hundred thousand dollars, uh, maybe into the, you know, $1 million range and see if you can buy them. Because what you can do is you can buy the company and then you could invest a little bit more money into it, a few hundred thousand dollars probably, you know, or maybe tens of thousands of dollars to fix all the kind of clunky parts and start to use it on your own so that you can save time with scheduling. You can save time with customer service requests. You could totally go out and find a software doing this already and you could just pay them the hundred or hundreds of, th of dollars per month to use their software or you could buy it, integrate it into your company and now you've boosted the worth the value of your company by having this ownership of your crm platform and your uh you know you you've sped up your service requests you don't have to have somebody constantly picking up the phone saying okay yep i'll schedule it in and sending a google invite you know things like that right so that's one idea is you could buy 
a company, particularly a software company, that can reduce the expenses to facilitate what it is you actually do. In the long run, you're gonna save money. In the long run, you're gonna build value. And if you keep working this software program, you keep making it better, not, not only could you expand your business using it, but you also may license it out to other pool cleaning companies across the country or across the world as another source of income. Let's use one more example, which is marketing. I'm in marketing all day long, PPC and SEO and influencer marketing and all that stuff, right? But again, I'm the first one to tell you that buying a company with an existing audience is an amazing strategy that can replace a lot of your marketing in some cases, or at least assist your marketing. So let's use that same pool cleaning company. Pool cleaning companies uh, need to market themselves. They need to be the ones that really want to grow. You should have a sales team who's going out and actively looking for prospects. You have a list of everybody with a pool in your area or your areas. And you should be reaching out to them, right? So another idea is if you are ambitious and you have an you have a goal of growing uh, exponentially into other towns and have setting up pool cleaning franchises or pool cleaning locations, what you could do is look for a pool cleaning blog. Yes, a blog, something like, I don't know, cleanpools.com. It's a blog. Maybe they do affiliate marketing. Uh, maybe it's by another company, uh, possibly even another pool cleaning company. And they blog about pool cleaning and how to do it and how to do it right. And you go and you make some offers to buy that. Because as long as you make sure that the domain rating and the monthly traffic is high enough, you know, you want, I don't know, let's say 50,000 visitors per month or more, you go in. But by buying that, you acquire inbound marketing, existing inbound marketing, and possibly even an existing audience. So you buy your way into this traffic that's coming into a website, and the traffic is looking about looking at how to clean my pool, right? What is the best way to clean my pool? What are the supplies I need? Whatever it might be. So you buy your way in here, and you leave the site working if it's already valuable. You, you keep serving people who want to DIY their own pool. But... For the ones that don't, you could put calls to action in there. Say it says, sick of cleaning your own pool, you wanna just get it done, you want it done for you, click here. And you could uh, have locations all over the country. You could work with other pool cleaning companies to get a commission if you refer them business. But if it's in your area or the areas that you're in, your company takes that business and now you have an inbound source of new clients and a new source of income from other locations until you set up a location there. So this is just this is just scratching the surface on how you can acquire businesses to grow your company. I've been thinking about this more and more for uh, my marketing company, Good Monster. Uh, I've been thinking of this more about the parent company as we we w want to expand, especially globally, acquiring companies that that sort of align with our existing businesses and either share in resources, share in leads, share in audience, or at least figure out a way that they can boost each other up uh, via technology or, or uh, more streamlined processes. But acquisition is in a fantastic way, and it's no longer for big businesses. Small businesses can utilize this strategy as well. Again, go to loopnet.com. Uh, there's another one, Flippa, F-L-I-P-P-A.com, uh, and there's a bunch of other sort of business uh, businesses for sale directory. There's even one in the digital marketing space. I get every day, I get emails from, I think it's called Barney. Um, we are Barney.com and it's only digital marketing agencies that are for sale. So these things are popping up more and more and they're not just reserved for big businesses. They are reserved for you and your business. As long as you're smart about it, it aligns with your growth strategy and it doesn't take away from your core business. That's another key. Make sure that you don't think that, that this business that you're buying is not going to take so much effort and resources that your core business is going to suffer. You want to buy something that's basically plug and play. That's how HubSpot did it. That's how Amazon will probably do it. And that's how you should do it too. Listen, if you found this valuable, you like talking about business and marketing, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's where I talk about marketing and performance marketing and ways to grow your company in today's day and age. And if you're looking for an ad agency to just do it for you, you want direct response revenue, check out my company, Good Monster. That's what we do for our clients like Amazon and Google and Samsung and Microsoft and Caterpillar and Radius and a bunch of others. Okay, so check us out, thegoodmonster.com. We'll see you in the next video.